what's lamer? What's lamer? Being a part of a uh, being a part of a raving WhatsApp group, right? Like where you kind of meet people to go rave with, and you talk about rave culture and all this sort of shit, or getting kicked out <laughs> of that WhatsApp group. <laughs> like, what's worse? Is it more embarrassing to be a part of a WhatsApp group where you talk about raving and shit? Or is it more embarrassing to get kicked out of that WhatsApp group? <laughs> because you might have sent too many unsolicited, you know, um, messages uh, late at night, you know, high, probably high off your brain, drunk or whatever, probably not remembering what you said. And then it kind of got back to the higher ups and they decided, you know what? You're not a good member of our community. <laughs> you're bringing this place to disrepute you're making people uncomfortable you're making people scared people are like calling their parents they're calling the police um they're wanting you know reassurance from um the mods and the flipping admin of this page and they want you to leave like what is actually worse i'm, I'm not really too sure i think it actually is worse joining a group i think nobody cool or nobody worth knowing for, this is really brutal because i'm part of it too nobody worth knowing is going to be a part of a whatsapp group right it's going to be a part of a group thing like if anything you're going to meet those people in real life and then you might get onto the whatsapp group later on but still i never even knew whatsapp groups were a thing before like recently right i never even knew that was a thing but recently i started to kind of get involved in more of that stuff but after a while i kind of got annoyed that all of my notifications will have like crazy numbers like 200 or something because there's mad people in there t talking about shit in it and i think it's it's pretty decent when it's like an event i think the event ones are really good like there's specific groups where like you have events where they'll be like, oh hey there's an event happening on the weekend and they'll make a separate group and then people who are going on that event can be like hey i'm going on my own um i like some company if you don't mind guy grabbing a drink before or hanging out blah 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 you can go and hang out but for me personally i think you lose a bit of the spontaneity a little bit of the spark um of going out by having all that preparation beforehand i think if you're going solo dolo to a rave annoying as it is for a lot of people out there me personally i love it i prefer to go solo dolo i've been going solo dolo raving since the inception or since the start of my actual raving journey to be fair which is not because you know i'm i think i'm cooler than anybody it's more so because i just don't have any friends so i had to just make do and i'm not gonna not go like the worst thing for me personally is to not be able to go to something because i don't have friends to go like i think that's a crying shame that you limit yourself not to go to a certain thing just because you got no one to go with whether it's to go and you know have a fucking burger at this new burger spot whether it's to go to an art gallery whether it's even to watch a movie in the flipping cinemas or the, like why would you deny yourself that experience just because you got no one else to sit next to you it doesn't make any sense obviously it'd be beneficial it'd be more advantageous to have that person next to you i understand it but i really do think it's better to go on your own so um i did start joining these groups and they were pretty decent but i have to be honest i didn't really partake in it like actively like in real life i didn't really do nothing and again i think i just you know there's just too much talking on there me as well i just get a little bit like what's that thing called i get a little bit complacent i get a little bit what's that thing called i procrastinate a bunch and i don't end up going going anywhere so i wasn't really the best member of those groups anyway because i wasn't really participating in the because i think a lot of those groups they're kind of like real relationships or real friendships whatever you cultivate in real life in that in order to take a relationship it's like meeting someone at work you meet someone at work that you like that you vibe with you have a good time um you get along with you go to lunch together you might go to a cup you know might get some drinks after work together and you have similar interests you share stuff together you share stuff between each other on slack or on teams and shit and it's all gucci the way to take that relationship to, to the next level is to then invite them to something that's nothing to do with work that's when you know okay you've got a real friend on your hand and it takes work to do that it takes both of you people probably having to make compromises and whatever it may be but usually that's the marker of a relationship friendship going to the next level like you do something outside of what you usually would do right to order to cement that and it could be anything it could be just going to fucking central london having a walk around or whatever it may be and i think i just didn't do that in that group so i didn't really have what's that one called I didn't really have any goodwill, you know, because I didn't really meet any these people in real life. And I don't really, you know, I don't really have any interest to anyway. Um, so, you know, even though I, I said a lot of things, you know, I didn't really follow through. So my words were like without any sort of like validity or any sort of like, you know, whatever. So it didn't really transpire. But then in the end, <laughs> in the end, to be the same person that's like shitting on these groups and talking like you're better than them groups. And then to them to, then to those groups to say... <laughs>
<laughs> but those same groups are saying, no, nah, you fuck off, <laughs> right? Because you're scaring all the hoes. That's when you know you're, you got problems. <laughs> Honestly, it made me... At first, I was like pissed. I was like, hold on. What the fuck is going on? And I was like, you know what? I get it. I understand. You know what? It, it, it's all well and good. Um, but I still would say, for those of you out there who follow me for like raving advice, whatever else I, you know, I talk about when it comes to clubbing and shit, and you're a bit like me and you're a bit of a solo person, you're a bit of a lone wolf, I really do recommend, as tempting as it could be to go on, because I think Reddit has a group too. Reddit has a couple of groups for people that want to meet up in terms of raving. I'm not too sure if it's like a social thing. I forgot what it is. There's a particular Reddit. I think it's linked to all the, I think it's linked to the main techno subreddit. So it's the main techno subreddit, the main Bergheim community Reddit. They all have, um, they all have uh, like an, an adjacent subreddit that you can use to meet people. Um, and I'm sure there's a Discord. I'm sure there's other WhatsApp groups and shit. As tempting as those are, I really do implore you. I really do implore you, especially if you're a young woman. I think it's really important to do so because, you know, there's always, there's, there's always guys on there that are going to jump on you and shit. I think it's really important to just try and cultivate those relationships in real life. And it's not that hard, honestly. It really is easy. All you need to do is, like, get talking to somebody in the queue on the way to go to the toilet, on the way to waiting for the toilet cubicles, talk to somebody in the smoking area. Like, legitimately, like, I'm quite um. I'm quite a striking individual when I when I'm going out, right? I've got a massive head. I'm tall. I'm black and shit. I probably don't look like any other raver that goes out and shit because you know they all look like a certain type and shit. I probably don't fit into that archetype, but I will ragger walk up to people in a smoking area and just say hi, like hey, what's up? Do you know what I mean like are you enjoying the night? Anybody here you're looking to see? Where did you come from? It's your first time here. Like I'll ragger just say that. And again, it doesn't work all the time. Sometimes that conversation started, honestly, lead balloon things. And people definitely give you the vibe of like, hey, fuck off. I don't want to talk to you. But it's worth a punt. And I think usually for me, I've had better luck cultivating a community, a friendship, um, a link, somebody to go raving with next time, a drug buddy, whoever it is doing that than any other way. And I've also remembered that I think what I'm going to do going forward, because I think I mentioned it beforehand, is that I remember, I think I sometimes kill the interaction by always going for the Instagram, you know, like, because I feel like, I don't know, I want to, sometimes I, I'm, I'm a bit like a child when it comes to, and I think that probably is to do with my lack of friends and shit. I don't really have a lot of experience in terms of like that sort of like chat you know as good as this is you know as good as i can talk into a microphone and rant and ramble it's not the same thing as having a conversation with an actual human being you know what i mean because this is pretty one way i'm just fucking talking shit into a mic you're just listening you're basically forced to listen if you listen to me do you know what i mean there's no like back and forth but I think when it comes to a conversation in the club, sometimes I can get so excited and so amped. Oh my God, we're having this communication. We're having this conversation. We're clicking. We're connecting. We like the same things. Oh my God, you saw that thing on Instagram. I saw that thing on Instagram. Uh, and I get so excited. And again, it's nothing to do with boys. It's nothing to do with girls and shit and hooking up at all. It's just, I get so excited that I just run for the fucking number or I run for the, sorry, I run for the Instagram ad. And I personally think running for the Instagram ad without it happening organically, or naturally can sometimes kill the conversation if that makes sense and I know it makes sense in my head because I remember there was a time when I was into all that PUA stuff right like pickup artist stuff and back in the day there was like a term for it where you don't rush for the clothes don't rush for the number you kind of let the kind of the conversation go as as is like you kind of play a bit of tennis with a person right you're going back and back forth and you don't just get too excited because sometimes in life, I've had it played times before, especially if, if especially if it's somebody that you're trying to hook up with, sometimes the the actual beauty and the actual amazingness of that experience is just that conversation. It doesn't need to go anywhere else. And I've been guilty of trying to like, you know, chase that moment or try to relive it or chase that dragon, right? I've been very guilty of it, especially in my past when I was, especially when I was in on Facebook a lot. My Facebook at one time had like over 5,000 people on it. I deleted it, obviously, because it got too crazy, but I legitimately had like 5,000 people plus as friends on it. And that was mostly because I added literally everybody I went to uni with, everybody I went to college with, loads of primary school people, and then every single nonsense interaction i had outside with random person add me on facebook add me on facebook so it just got a bit too crazy but i think the reason why i did that is because i wasn't 
comfortable with just living in a moment. I couldn't just sit and enjoy that chat in a smoking area with some random dude from Latvia who's talking to me about his job, who's talking to me about his wife and blah, 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 and why he's here in London. I had to kind of like, you know, I couldn't just like live with it. And sometimes, who knows, maybe I would have got his Instagram later on at the bar when I bumped into him again later. Maybe I would have never got it. But because I'm chasing it, it sometimes kills interaction. So I've kind of come to that realisation that I just need to kind of let things live or let things be as they are kind of thing. Because that's also really important because the last thing you want is to like, is to be that person, which I've, be, again, been guilty of, where because you have a good interaction one day while you're in the fucking buzz of a high and stuff, you think that is reflective of the relationship you have with that person like forever and ever when it's not. Maybe they were just high and they couldn't sleep and they were just like tapping around the phone talking to you. But you're thinking, oh my God, this is my friend. It's like, mm, not really your friend. You know what I mean? Once they're sober and they've got around their real friends, suddenly you're not their friend anymore. It's sort of like the analogy I use is like, you remember when you're at work and like you're hanging out with your like work buddy, yeah, the person that you like the most, right? And then one day your, the, the, your work buddy, their actual real friends come out. And you see how quickly they change. They like completely start ignoring you. You don't exist anymore when their real friends come around. That's kind of how it feels like when you're raving sometimes. You sometimes, you get people's digits, you get people's Instagrams and stuff and you start talking you feel like they're like your friend. And it's like, not really, because when Monday comes, when Tuesday comes and their actual real friends come around, suddenly you don't exist anymore. So um, you have to kind of keep that in mind. But I did find it utterly hilarious, that whole flipping group situation. But again, understandable. Um, again, I think... Um, if you are trying to get into the scene, trying to get into the fucking, you know, um, trying to be a part of the little scene that is exists out there, you're probably better off just doing things, whether it's like throwing a party, whether it's attending events IRL, talking to people IRL, as opposed to doing the whole group thing. Because I, I don't know, I found it a lot, you know, as much as I obviously misstepped with some of my actions, <laughs> I did find there was a lot of talking, you know, a lot of talking, not much, not much of doing and shit. And um, maybe it doesn't work for most people. I think most people could benefit from just... Because we don't do it in a lot of our lives, you know what I mean? In a lot of areas of our lives, we don't really go out of our way to... Because I've said it before, like, it's really difficult to make friends when you're an adult. Like, over the age of probably, like, 22, it's very hard to find new friends, especially if you don't have a hobby. Like, if you have no hobbies, um, you know, where you have to meet other adults or you have to interact with other adults, it's very difficult to f meet them. So I feel like clubbing is a easy way to do it like why not and not everybody in cl goes clubbing is drunk and everyone that goes clubbing is high so why don't take advantage of it and just you know extend the extend your arm out and say hi to somebody and see where that goes and i think you owe it to yourself to try and do it the hard way which is obviously doing it in person it's the more difficult way to do it i swear to god it is but it really is beneficial in the long term um because it, it allows you to kind of get over that you know weird social thing that we all have um it's also really risky too there's that kind of risk reward thing going on but i also think <laughs> like, like i said the majority 99 percent of my interactions i've had in clubs that have kind of been solid have been because they're no 99 percent of my friendships or like people that i know and shit from club land have been real life all of them no, like, very rarely have there's been like, maybe a couple i think i met people actually big up my guy matt little Matt Little, I went out with a couple of times before, so big, big up him. Um, I can't think of anybody else who I really kind of met within that raving kind of scene that was, you know, legit, and we kind of had, you know, bag and banter and whatever maybe. So, I think in general, um, probably you know, prioritize IRL events as opposed to WhatsApp. But if you are doing the WhatsApps as well, you know, code of conduct, all that sort of shit, follow that sort of stuff, wherever it may go. But whatever you can do, whatever you can do.